<laughs> okay, so now I'm on camera and I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, making free body diagrams to illustrate forces. So just to recap, and you guys know all the answers to this first part, are forces scalar quantities or vector quantities? They are vector quantities because they have both what and what? Direction and magnitude, that's exactly right. Okay. If you are going to illustrate and do me a picture of a vector, what does it look like? A pointing arrow. It's a pointing arrow, right? Okay. The pointy part tells us about the direction. What does the length of the arrow tell us? Magnitude, exactly. Well, I'm going to say distance, but I'm wrong. Okay. How big the force is. So if I have two vectors, let's say that I've got vector A and I've got vector B, which one is stronger? B. B. B is a stronger force because the arrow is longer. Is everybody cool with that? Yeah. All right. So let's talk about one more thing when it comes to forces. What is the difference between balanced forces and unbalanced forces. Or in other words, if I can draw it as a picture, if I've got an object and two forces are acting on that object with equal magnitude versus if I have an object where forces are acting with unequal magnitudes, what is going to be the difference in motion between the balanced and the unbalanced? You know what you told me? Yeah. Those people, those persons. Uh -huh. The people in person pulling the thing. <laughs> um. What's okay. going to be the difference in the motion of these two objects? So that Down first one is isn't going to move. That may or may not be true. Why? Because if it's already in motion, it's going to remain in motion, right? Uh huh. What about the one on the right? That no, one's right. going to accelerate. Boom! There it is. With unbalanced forces, you get acceleration. Remember, acceleration doesn't mean getting faster, although it might. It could mean getting slower. It could mean changing direction. But if you have unbalanced forces, you are going to have acceleration. Is that the, the first one? Is that like, isn't it the law of what is it? An object in motion stays in motion and let that go on by another. That's one of Newton's laws. Which one is it? Two. One of the law number one. Because you're describing, I'm talking about Roman numeral 1, it's also the letter I, and it stands for? Inertia. Uh-huh. No way. Bro, I'm going off today. Okay. <laughs> so, if something is already in motion, it will tend to remain in motion unless it's acted on by an unbalanced force. If it's staying still, it will tend to stay still unless acted on by an unbalanced force. And how does friction apply to the Friction is a force. So, would, so we could put the, um, the like Newton's law on the unbalanced forces. Well, no, I mean this applies to both situations. Here. Okay. Okay. Now, imagine if you will check this out. Let's say in this first one here, I've got a balanced force. Now, one of these is me. pulling on this box and walking that way. So I would label this right here as F for force, subscript me, okay? Because it's me pulling it. Now if I'm pulling it, what is acting in the opposite direction? Gravity. We're not gravity, not gravity. Friction. friction is. So this right here, check it out. So we, this right here would be F of friction, now, I'm glad you brought up gravity. So what you're telling me is that there's more than just two forces acting on this box? Yeah, I'll give an answer okay. about that. So, 
Let's talk about that. So let's do another pair of arrows here. Okay? So this right here would be the force of gravity, or just F of G. So if gravity is pulling on the box that I'm pulling this way, why is the box not sinking through the floor? What's acting on it in the opposite direction of gravity? If gravity is pulling it down, what's pushing it up? Okay, look, look, look. Let's say my hand is the floor. Oh, look, I'm, I'm holding. Mm. Oh. <laughs> um, so let's say that this is the floor. Here's the box. Now gravity is pulling the box down. What's pushing the box up? The floor. My hand. The floor is pushing it up. And so we have a name for this force right here that's pushing it up. Okay? This force right here that's pushing it up, this is what is called the normal force. I have a question. Give me a minute. We symbolize it as F sub N. The normal force is defined as any force if something is sitting on a flat surface, okay, so here's a flat surface, the normal force is the force that pushes up uh, perpendicular to that surface. So if it's flat like this, then the normal force goes like that. What if I've got something that's sitting on a ramp? What direction is the normal force pushing? At an angle. It's pushing at an angle. So it, it's a force that is put, if something's resting on a flat surface, it is the force that is perpendicular to that surface. Okay? It typically acts in the opposite direction from gravity. Not always. Okay, what's your question? Okay, so my first question is like, is this just for, does that only apply to like solid objects, or can it apply to like buoyancy and like water and stuff? Like if something Ooh, floats. that's good. Well, if you've got something that is floating in a, in a fluid, whether it's a liquid or a gas, then you're talking about buoyant force. Okay. That's not quite the same thing as normal force. Okay. Okay? But it acts in a similar fashion, yes. And my other question is, like, uh -huh. say you have, like, like, a metal bar or whatever, right? Then you take a magnet and you put it on. Is, is the normal force going down at that point? Or is it still going opposite of gravity? No. If I add a magnet underneath it, and in addition to the normal force, I've got magnetic force pushing down. So I actually have two forces going that direction. Okay. okay. But it is going down at that point. No, the normal force is still going up. Okay. Because, I mean, if I've got something magnetic sitting here, and I put a magnet underneath there, while gravity and the magnet are pulling it down, the normal force is still pushing it up. Okay. And I would say at that point, if it's not falling through here, then the normal force is actually increasing. Okay. Okay. It's what keeps something from sinking down through the floor. Okay. So here I would still have balanced forces. And so there, if I'm pulling, and friction is pulling the other direction, but we're pulling with the same amount of force, then I'm going to keep going with the same velocity. I'm going to keep going in the same direction at the same speed. If I have an unbalanced force, I'm going to get acceleration. Either the speed will be changing or the direction will be changing. Yes? So is that what happened when we did that pulley thing? Oh, let's talk about that pulley thing. Excellent question. So let, let, me, let me recreate the situation. OK, I'll put the, I'll put the table over my head here. So you've got the cart. Right? And you've got the pulley, right? And you've got the string running from the pulley down to your little hooked weight. Okay? Now, when you let go of everything, what happens? It accelerates. It accelerates. Now, let's talk about all the forces at play on this cart. Okay? First of all, is gravity acting on this cart? Yes. It is. So let me let me kind of bring this cart over here, just so we've got a little more room. 
the drop. So we've got force of gravity, right? Why isn't it falling through the table? The normal force of the table. The normal force of the table is acting that way. Now, what other forces are acting on? The pulling. Okay, the, the it's pulling. getting a pulling force pulling it that direction. Okay, let's call this like force of, now since it's hooked up to a string, we could label this several things. We could call it force of tension, because there's tension on the string that's actually pulling it. But just for right now, I'm going to call it force of the weight. Okay, the weight that is going that way. Now, are there any forces that are acting the other direction? The friction of the tires. There's friction. So there's friction going on between the tires and the track. There's friction going on between the wheels and the axles, between the axles and the body of the thing. But I can kind of sum all of that up by doing a vector going to the left and calling it force of friction. Now, based on what you saw happen, is the frictional force greater than, less than, or equal to the force from the weight? Less. And your evidence for that is what? Acceleration in the car. Uh-huh. Acceleration of the car. It got faster and faster and faster. I'll have another question. Please. So the force of gravity of the car, right? What is that? Does the force of gravity of the weight affect that as well? Not this, because this is kind of, because of this pulley here, this weight has its own set of forces acting on it. Okay? It has its own force of gravity acting. Now, is there anything acting the other direction? Yes. What? The car. Right? The, the okay. string? Well, the string itself. So it's got a force acting up here. And Would that force be greater or less than force of gravity? Less. It's going to be less. Okay? So it's going to have a smaller one. We're going to have to call this like force of part, or the force of the string. Again, it's tension force because it's pulling on a line here. Um, any other forces acting on you can think of? In fact, there's one big one that we've completely, totally left off because we rarely talk about it, but we know it's there. Air resistance. Air resistance. Would air resistance be acting on this? Yes. Okay. So it's also going to be going this way. I'm going to call it like F of air. Is air resistance acting on this? Yes. Okay, what direction? Uh, the, the force of the weight that way, right? Is it going left or right? Well, it's going the same direction as the friction. Exactly. So this right here would also be force of air. What we are constructing here, showing all of these vectors, is the whole point of what I wanted to get to today. These are called free body force diagrams. Hey, look at us. Uh, we really be advanced, don't we, Mr. King? Uh-huh. Always. <laughs> All it is is showing an object as a, as a representation here and showing every force acting on it as a vector. All the vectors, and you see here with the examples that we've got, the vectors are all going away from the object. They are showing the direction that the force is acting on that object. You never have any that are going toward the object. So, on the string, yes. Okay, and the weight's going down, right? Would the string, or the force of the car, would that be considered the normal force in that situation, or would there be a normal force in that situation? On the falling weight, there is not a normal force because it's not resting on the surface. Okay. Okay. It is to a degree in free fall, although it's not true free fall because there are there's this tension force pulling the line. Would it be possible to get this situation where you let go of the weight and the weight and the cart neither one of them move? If, would, would the mass have to be the same? I don't know if the mass being the same would be it, but one thing I know for a fact is that the forces going this way would have to be equal to the forces going this way. So you have to add weight to the cart? If you had enough weights in the cart, then that increased weight would... So, uh, would increase uh, well, several things about this. Something else that we're not including here on the force diagram because it's really hard to do so. Another force that is preventing it from going this way, at least to start with, is inertia. 
off. To start with, all of its inertia is keeping it still, and if you're moving, then you are pulling against that inertia, that tendency to stay in the same place. However, that becomes less and less as it continues moving, because once it starts moving, its inertia is now wanting to keep it moving this way. <coughs> and so, it gets faster and faster and faster as that force, that unbalanced force, continues to apply to it. So, if, if the force of gravity on the car was the same as the force of gravity on the weight, would it move? And if I can be really picky about this, the force of gravity and the force the force of gravity on both is the same. Oh, okay. Because oh, yeah. so it's 9.8. Exactly. We're all being accelerated 9.8 meters per second. So the inertia is pulling against it until it starts to accelerate towards the more inertia towards the more inertia. Mm -hmm. And think about this. Have you ever had to move a really heavy object? Yeah. Okay. Is it easier to keep it moving or to get it moving in the first place? Keep it moving. Because to start with, you have to overcome its inertia holding it still. But after you do, inertia works for you. Then you have to stop it. And and, and then the inertia is working against you again because you're having to accelerate contrary to the direction it's already moving. Does anyone have any questions? I don't want to steamroll anything or anybody. You looking good so far? Okay. If y'all will give me just a moment, I'm going to see if it'll let me pause the video. And I'm going to go run a couple of copies. Let's see if you can Okay, so now what we've got here is we've got some practice problems showing some pretty body diagrams. And so uh, what we want to do is we want to look at each and every one of these and we want to try and be sure we make an exhaustive list of all the forces that are at work on any one. So let's start with this first one, a toy truck resting on the floor. Okay? What I'm going to do, I'm not going to worry about getting too artistic with this. I'm going to draw the floor. I'm going to represent my truck as just a box. Okay. You want to make your truck look pretty, make your truck look pretty. I don't care if your truck. So, what forces are acting on this truck? Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to have this downward arrow labeled force G. What else? Uh, uh, normal, normal force. And it's going to be equal because it's not rising off the ground. So, F of N going up. Anything else? Nope. If it's just resting on the floor, we are good. What if, what if, oh, what if the force, those forces be the same? Yes. Too? Yes, they would. Do we need to mark those? Or? Okay, if we want to show that they're congruent, what we can do is just like, you know, put a simple little line on them. If there's any question in your mind about whether one is bigger than the other. Okay. How about number two? Monkey hangs from a tree by its tail. So we got to look for a tree and the ground, right? Okay. Well, we're gonna, I'm going to have the monkey right here. It's not on the ground. I think monkey was given some more monsters, you know, for these things. Okay. Now, so what forces are at work on this monkey? Gravity. Gravity. Going down, right? So F of G. Okay. Anything else? A uh, normal force for like on No, he's not on the hanging. He's hanging. So air is no. no. Air is not holding him up. What's holding him up? Oh, his tail. His tail. Okay. Also, oh, it is an upward force. So let's right? call it force of tail. Or force of T. T could be tail or T could be tension. And again, is he rising? Is he falling? Or is he staying put? Staying put. Okay. So again, these are going to be Ah, uh, now here's where it starts to get fun. A monkey hangs between two trees by its arms that are at angles of 30 degrees with the horizontal. All right. So here's the monkey. He's starting to look a little panicked. Okay. So. Where are my forces? What forces are acting on? Okay, you have a force of tension going at an angle, right? Okay, so I've got one going this way, about 30 degrees. Okay, how would I label that? That's a T. Okay, 
I could do f of t1 or f of t2, and I could do f of arm. Okay? I'll do f of t1. What else? So in the opposite direction. Opposite direction. Also 30 degrees, right? Yes, drop and f of t2. And then we've got gravity. And are the f of t's congruent to the f? Now t's? these two would be congruent to each other. I agree. Now, a big question, and we can go ahead and we can go ahead and discuss this and let's listen. Would the force of gravity be congruent to those? Would it be greater than or less than? It'd be greater than, right? No. Why? Because it would be greater than would be falling. Okay, now wait a minute. Uh, okay, but what if here's, be like here's, here's, here's where you're going to go. You're going to groan really big. And some of you may already be pre groaning because you already see it coming. So let's just look at one of these tension forces here. This tension force right here at 30 degrees. Guess what? It has an X component and a Y component. So look, if, if there's one of these on this side, and there's another one over here on this side, another little Y component of this going up, then these two Ys added together would be equal to this G going down. Okay, okay so they're equal. Well, so these are not equal to that. So them together are equal. But since they're separate, it's not an algebraic. Okay. So these, right, these are equal to each other, but neither of these are equal to gravity. Hey. So they have to be put together to be equal to gravity? Or no? Well, let's, let's, let's put some numbers to this. Because now, now I'm really interested in finding a good answer to this. So. Well, we are on the third now. Yeah, we are on the So. No, this is good. This is good stuff. So let's let's go ahead and give. Let's say that gravity is pulling on this monkey with a force of ten newtons. Okay, is that fair? Yes. Okay. Now this monkey is also. Let me put a little horizon through the monkey here. He's got an arm going up here and an arm going up here at thirty degrees. And so we've got some kind of unknown force on both sides that's going to be congruent, right? So if we just look at this and we make a right triangle out of it, and there's an x component to this vector and there's a y component to this vector. Now, I'll tell you right now, the y component of this vector, do you know what it's equal to? It's equal to 5. Yeah. Exactly. How do you that? Right, so this upper part right here is 5 newtons, and over on this side, this upper part right here is also equal to 5 newtons. So could I actually figure out how many newtons of force are present on this hypotenuse? Heck yes, I'm going to use Sokotoa. So let's do that. If I wanted to find this, okay, so, so that's opposite, so I'd use sine, right, because sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So if I say sine of 30, that's going to equal 5 over uh, whatever my force is. So it would be 2 divided by 30 that way. Okay. Well, if I divide by 5, that's going to be 1 over h. If I invert this whole thing and I say 1 over sine of 30, that would be equal to h over 5. That's going to be easier to solve. So it's actually, okay. So 5 divided by sine of 30. Is that what you just said? Yes. Okay. And yeah, you're right. <laughs> so if I do 5 divided by sine of 30, making sure that my calculator is in degrees. Sometimes it's not. I get that that force, holy crap. Guess what that force is? 5. So, somebody else do this. I want to be sure that I'm not just making this part back. Is it 69? No. <laughs> Nothing so fun. Oh, I don't have my calculator. Oh, I don't have my calculator. Oh. Oh, I can't oh. 
Isn't that crazy? So it turns out that 5 divided by sine of 30 is 10. Hey, I said that. So, yeah, in this particular case, all of them would be congruent if you do it at a 30 degree angle. Yeah, what are the odds? That does not always happen. It just happened in this particular case. Crazy sauce. Okay, so shall we continue? Let's, let's. Okay. All right. That's fine. We think we have time to do one or two more. An apple is free falling from a tree. Let's neglect air resistance. So what forces are acting on this uh, square apple? Right. Gravity downwards. Okay. Gravity yeah. downwards, right? And I think the G is going to be higher than the upward force, right? What upward force? That, oh, there's no air resistance. Uh, would it be inertia? I guess you could make the argument for inertia. Bye. I'm not going to, because that's going to change as time goes by. Because the more it falls, the faster it falls, because inertia will stop working against it and start working with it. So I think we're done with that. If, hey, and hey, that goes back That goes back to what we know about free fall. If something's in free fall, what's the only force acting on it? Gravity. Gravity. If you choose to believe that air resistance is not a Gravity is the only external force that. Oh, there's the word external force. Inertia is an internal force. Okay, so a little bit different. Okay, all right. Let's do five, and then I think we can be done. Oh no, we'll do five and six because they're both awesome. A block is pushed across the floor by a toddler at a constant velocity. Consider frictional force, but neglect air resistance. So let's get our floor. Let's get our block. Now let's talk about our forces. If it's at a constant velocity. Right. So you have normal force. Normal force is acting up. F of N. Yeah, gravity. gravity is acting down. F of G. And those two are going to be congruent to each other. What else? So would they be, if it's constant velocity, would that be a downward? Yes, it would. Good job, Anna. That means that we've got another pair of forces going like this. We've got force of toddler, or F tod. Well, it's going back the other direction. Force of friction, so I'll just do F of F. And these are going to be congruent to each other, so I'll put a couple little lines on. Yeah, I have a question. Shoot. On the first one with the toy truck, would it have a balance force on it as well? The toy truck? Yes. Yes, it would. Because the normal force and the gravity would both, that would be the only balanced force. But on number one, there's no forces pushing it to the left or right. Yeah, so it wouldn't. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's why its velocity is constant. Its velocity is zero. I think we are just about out of time, folks. So put these away. We'll take another look at them next week. We'll also uh, get back to our uh, helium football and catching the bullet in.